Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay. Welcome to another review of a War of the Ring game. This is a friendly game that I played today and I thought it was interesting because it's a fairly standard shadow military attack against a free people trying to destroy the ring as quickly as possible but also managing corruption. So I hope you'll enjoy it. Here we go. So I allocated, I'm Shadow, and my opponent is uh, obviously playing free, and I allocated one eye. There's some discussion about how many eyes to allocate at the beginning of the game. I think one eye is often a, a reasonable approach. So this is what we ended up rolling. You can see my starting cards. Obviously, it's great to start with a new power is rising. That's a powerful uh, early muster effect. And I got my two, my two musters, so I'm going to be able to get Saruman on the first turn. This is not a great role for free peoples. It would be great to have an extra character movement, but since Gandalf is in the Fellowship right now and you have two playable cards, this turns out to be a perfectly nice role. So let's see what happens. I go ahead and get Isengard to war. I, I misclick there, but Isengard goes to war. He plays Riders of Theoden. That's a great early card. Um, I think it would be really nice, especially because he has this army muster uh, right here. Now that he has a decent sized army in Edoras, he can use this army muster to move move it to Westamnit so that whenever Helm's Deep gets attacked eventually, and it almost certainly will at some point in the game, unless he really defends it, it'll be able to he'll be able to bring these armies in to Helm's Deep, or at least be more likely to be able to bring them in. So this is a great this is a great first play. It's always good to draw strategy cards early so that he can try and get to scouts, which is another good way of defending this stronghold, or if he can get this regular into Old Forest Road and I end up attacking up here, he can get that regular in. So these, this is a great, great first play of the game. All right, the last battle, obviously not a particularly useful card right now, but a very good, um, a very good combat effect. Daylight is great combat. All right, so we continue with a fairly standard first turn. He plays uh, Smeagol Helps Nice Master because why not? He gets to draw him a card, and he did it in the proper order where he used the Palantirs first and then moved. It's unlikely that you're going to get hit with only two dice in a single movement, but if you happen to get hit and you happen to draw three, it would be nice to be able to lose Gandalf at that point, and therefore it's good to get this card drawing in first. So this is all great. And he drew Wizard Staff. So that's a great that's a great early draw, given that you have Gandalf. Okay, so a perfectly nice, and I miss him on the hunt, a perfectly nice first turn, and I start going with my armies. I think it's a reasonable start to send this army up north, so that's my plan. He hasn't reinforced anything. Um, sorry for that alarm. He hasn't reinforced anything at this point, so I don't have any reason to go one way or another. Seems perfectly fine to go after the elves. All right, he musters the elves. Now, this this is reasonable. I, I, don't, I don't think it's bad to get the elves. He can see that this army is coming to towards Lorien. Most likely this army is gonna head up to Woodland Realm. So I don't, I don't really mind this, but it's an army muster. And I think that, you know, you only get this one out of six times. If I roll a Will of the West, I'm probably using that to move the Fellowship or to get Gandalf at that point or something like that. So, while I have this army muster, I think my inclination is to get this army from Edoras into Westamnet and this army from, from Carrick and Old Forest Road to prepare for, for these armies. I'd probably do that now because it's possible I'm just going to have musters later. And, and um, so I want to use my army movement while I have the army die. It's minor, but uh, it could matter. Okay, so I go ahead and keep my armies moving north. No reason not to do that. All right, next turn. So he draws into scouts, which is great. That's always nice to have early. And I drew Corsairs of Umbar early. That's that's great. I'm going to be able to. It's most likely I'm going to be able to take off take out uh, Dol Amroth um, before he reinforces it if I draw an early Corsair. So that's that's good. I have some powerful things here. All right, um, we have uh, fairly nice rolls. I mean, these are these are great rolls. I'm getting the musters I need and army movements and he's getting will of the west and some fellowship movement so he has an interesting choice here he has wizard staff which is obviously a very powerful effect but he also has this will of the west in two movement 
So he has a chance to get Gandalf this turn, turn two. Now, I don't know. This is, this is a good thing to think about. What would you do in this situation? Would you use this Will of the West to play Wizard Staff, acknowledging that you're not going to get Gandalf this turn? Or do you try and move twice to kill off Gandalf so that you can get him this turn? Because a turn two Gandalf is really going to accelerate your fellowship. You're going to end up wasting the Wizard Staff card. And you're going to end up, this is, this is quite a bit of, of corruption reduction, you know, figure about two corruption is what that will save you. Um, the other thing is, as you're going through Moria, let's look, about, let's look at that, because he's at two mo one movement right now, first movement unlikely to get hit, second movement could get hit, and that would be into Moria and get revealed. So that's an unpleasant time to get revealed, and he'd end up going around. So... I don't know. Part of me wonders, maybe what I do is I move once without playing Wizard Staff. If I happen to get hit and lose Gandalf, something like I get a three tile and I lose Gandalf, then I go ahead and get my Will of the West. I don't know. It's a, it's a tough call. It's a tough call. I just It's quite possible that you're going to end up going quite a few more turns without Gandalf if you don't get them right now when you can't probably get them right now. So th this is a very interesting decision point in the game. You'll see what he opted to do. So he did exactly that. He uh, tried to move once. He saw that the there was a miss. And then he, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see what comes next. All right, so I go ahead and continue my mustering. He passes. I, I have good army movement, so I'm going to just get my armies up there. And now, this is the moment he's using the Will of the West to play Wizard Staff. And because Gandalf is still in the Fellowship, he treats that as a Palantir. He gets to draw another character card. He draws the file. That's great. So I, I think that's a really elegant play. He kept his options open. He risked wasting Wizard Staff by losing Gandalf, but he's not going to risk a third movement, a second movement this turn that would land him directly in Moria when he has Wizard Staff as an option right here. So I think I think that's I think that's a great play. All right, we go ahead and I continue and move. Now that was an interesting point. I had the choice between an army movement or a character movement, and I used the character movement even though I want to get this army over here. I'm not sure what I was thinking. I think that's just an inaccuracy. That's a mistake. I should have used the army movement because what's going to happen, not particularly unpredictably, is that he's going to move this army into Old Forest Road, and now I'm going to have to waste an army movement to do that attack instead of using that character die to do the attack. I think maybe I had some character card I was I was thinking I might want to leave open as an option. I, I'm not sure. that I, I think that was just a mistake. That's just a mistake. I should, I should have used the army movement to move. I would have had an extra half movement, and then I should use the the character die to attack. Now I go ahead and attack here anyway. I don't have Swarm of Bats. I'm thinking, well, he, you know, he has some chance at having a um, scout at this point. I think, um, I don't remember exactly how much it is. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. He's, he's drawn three cards, but there are three of them in the deck. Maybe like 30 or 40% chance of having it by now. Um, so, you know, it, I don't know, but I'm thinking that this is a perfectly fine way to get the Witch King in if, if the North gets to war. I obviously don't want that one extra regular in, but I, I can probably still handle Woodland Realm. And he did, with that extra half movement, clearly Old Forest Road is the great, great play. The other extra half movement he put Iron, he went into Iron Hills, from Iron Hills into Erebor. Uh, I am sending armies up north, so I think it makes sense. Um... Part of me wonders, should he have, again, gotten this army into Westamnet with that half movement, and then with a second half movement later, uh, a second army uh, movement later, he will move from Westamnet into Helm's Deep, and then from Iron Hills into Erebor. I think he has some time to, to get into, um, into Iron Hills. I mean, from Iron Hills into Erebor. So, okay. So, so that happened. Um, I go ahead and attack. He plays scouts. That's that's obviously correct for him. He moves, um, and I do hit him on this third movement, which would be into Moria. 
uh, I, I mean, yeah, into Moria. And so it's it's always great to be able to avoid that that tile on the third on the third movement. I think I think he just played. I think he played this turn really well. This was this is just beautifully played by by uh, Free. All right, so he gets rid of Wizard Staff. That this obviously makes sense. And now hopefully next turn he'll be able to get uh, Gandalf. All right, so we keep drawing. Um, these are all these are all perfectly good cards. I'm gonna allocate one eye, and you know he yeah these are these are all these are all good. We're, we're drawing this ball. All right, so I just rolled three extra eyes. That's obviously a little more than you typically want as Shadow, but he rolls three character dice. I mean four character dice, all characters. So um, I'm feeling perfectly happy now with all of these with all of these eyes. Um, okay, so. Uh, he moves and I hit him. You know, it's a little, I think it's a little better than 50% there. Um, pretty, pretty close to 50 or 50, I think. And I get a zero reveal. Obviously it's unpleasant to get revealed through Moria. Um, but he has everybody in the fellowship. I, th I think it's okay. So he goes ahead and reveals. It's obviously not great with my army right there, right next to him, but what can you do? Um, he has, I think he has enough, um, power in the fellowship. And then, so, and then I draw the three and, and Gandalf, of course, uh, dies to that. So I move my army on, I go ahead and take Carrick and I want to be careful. I don't want to let the North muster up. Um, and I don't want this army to be able to, um, you know, retreat again. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take, uh, Carrick first. That gets the North one away from war. And then I'm going to take Dale and from Dale, I'll go into Woodland Realm. So I think that's the right order of things, and I'm going to be able to get the Witch King this turn. So I'm going to be able to attack with one die, and then I'm going to be able to muster the Witch King with the other die, because the North will be at war. Okay, so that's a reasonable plan. Hopefully he doesn't, you know, I'm hoping that he doesn't have a second a second Scouts this early in the game. And I'll use Great Host to make sure that I um, kill that unit. Okay, so he hides the Fellowship, that's clearly correct. I attack Dale. Um, he misses with no quarter. I'm not sure. I guess it makes sense to play no quarter here. Um, I don't know. I would I would probably save it. I'm not in a I'm not in a huge rush because I, he's planning on playing file of Galadriel with with his one of his other character dice. Um, so you're not going to have to discard cards. So I I would probably save that is my inclination. All right, and he ends up missing. Uh, so that's, you know, that's always a waste, uh, a, you know, a little bit of a sad thing to miss it. But I don't know, it's it's not totally clear. Maybe it's good to play it, try and get the hit, and then he'll play other combat cards once he's, once I eventually attack Woodland Realm. All right, so he plays um, File. I think that makes sense. I mean, the other thing to do, if, if you think ahead and you're like, well, what am I going to do with my fourth die, my fourth character card? Uh, I'm going to move, right? Like, what else, what else am I going to do? And, and so if you know that you're going to move, my inclination is to do the movement first, and then if you get revealed, you can hide. So I would just do that in a slightly, slightly different order. All right, but it's obviously great to get these two, these two blue tiles so early. Um, you know they're in there. There's been no red tiles yet. This is, this is great. So Fellowship, I think, is making nice progress. Hopefully he'll roll Will of the West next time and get Gandalf, um, and he'll be rolling along. All right, so um, I get the Wish King as planned, and he moves the Fellowship, as discussed. Obviously, it's very likely I'm going to hit him. I have uh, effectively six dice, and I have to roll five or a six. So um, I hit him twice, and I draw three. So, you know, I don't. I think it probably makes sense to to lose a random here. Um, if you hit if you hit Strider, obviously that's bad. Um, Part of me wonders maybe go up to maybe go up to three, and then you're out of the range of um, Morgul wound probably or starting to get more out of the range of Morgul wound, and then if you draw something like Athelos or something that's gonna something that's gonna heal you, um, you'll have a you'll you'll be able to play it as opposed to having to hold it, so. You know, one out of six to lose Strider right now isn't that bad. But if you did lose Strider, it's going to slow down the, the Fellowship. I don't know. Pro probably right to take a random. Probably. All right. So he gets Legolas. Uh, perfectly fine. Right? That's that's an absolutely good good result. And I play Nazgul Strike here. I'm a little worried 
that he's gonna reveal into Lorien that he's gonna have like um, it's just gonna be harder to make progress against him and I have such a good chance of hitting him at this point um, I don't know what else you know I could have played a new powers rising here instead but I do kind of want to slow down the fellowship a little bit and I'm thinking I might be able to reveal him and if he's shown that he's willing to take random companions then I want I want to get rid of Strider as soon as possible because that's that's going to slow him down too. And and I want to just in case I want to keep him out of Lorien in case he's in case he's thinking about that. I don't want to give him that option. Um, okay, so uh, I get to move Nazgul around. Oh, and also I was thinking about that because I wanted to get more Nazgul um, up here for dreadful spells in case I wanted to do dreadful spells up here to take this. So it just gives me it gives me some options there. You know, there is some argument for waiting in case he's going to play Mithril Potent Sting or something like that. I can get rid of it. Um, but um, I, I like the ability to do a bunch of damage here. There are all four eyes are still in the hunt pool. So I have a, you know, I have, a, you know, not a on one out of three chance of rolling an eye. And that could do a lot of damage given that I'm rolling effectively six dice at 50%. You know, I could I could easily get two or three hits right here. All right, so um, I, I got uh, three hits, but I, I drew one. So, you know, still making some progress and gets that tile out of the out of the pool. All right, I have nine dice to his four. Um, I allocate one and roll four more. So he did not get his Will of the West. That's uh, a little bit sad for him. Um, but at least I have four extra eyes in there that are not going to do much good against the single movement. So... He plays a power too great. That's obviously something you don't want to see a shadow. Um, it gets the elves one away from war. I need to, I'm not going to be able to have time to attack into Lorien um, before he musters it up. Um, I will be able to take one of these. Um, and I don't really have a good army card to discard. I was very happy to draw shadows on Misty Mountain, which would load up Moria, which would let me have a big enough army to take Lorien. But um, with a power too great at this point, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty rough. So I'm starting to think maybe, maybe Rohan is a more likely course. I, I'm not quite willing to give up on, on the elves yet. Um, so I'm, I'm still going to threaten that. Maybe, maybe I should shift my, uh, plans immediately, but I wait. I keep my options open and, um, I have courses of Umbar, so I'm not going to, I'm just not going to discard this army card to get rid of power too great. But I think this shows the power of getting some combat cards early. I mean, getting some army muster cards early as free people. It gives you a lot of options. Okay. So I think it makes, I think it makes sense for him to play it. He could have, he could have maybe waited a little bit, but it probably makes sense. And again, here's a situation where he just has he just has regular musters. He doesn't have army musters, and so he's going to have trouble getting this army into into Helm's Deep. All right, so I play Palantir now. I think that makes sense, even though I don't have any other Palantirs. I know that he's going to be having trouble with Will of the Wests because next round, if he gets a Will of the West, he's going to want to use it on Gandalf. So I think it's a I think it's a safe play. He of course moves the fellowship once. I hit and um, do two damage. He takes a random again. Um, starting to get a little risky to lose Strider, but um, you know I guess that makes sense. It would be good to get a Hobbit in Fangorn to be able to have some flexibility where Gandalf comes back. And we continue. So it's not entirely clear what I should be doing with these army musters. I have a lot of flexibility. I don't want to attack the elves and get the elves to war because then it opens up Círdan's ships as an option into Dol Amroth. And I want to bring this army to Umbar and then, and then take it before he has a chance to reinforce this. So I'm reluctant to attack the elves and I still need to get rid of a power too great before I'm really ready to attack the elves, because ideally I should get both of these. So I guess my plan right now is to probably play Shadows on Misty Mountains and then start to move some some armies around to start to get ready to threaten Lorien. 
I don't I don't have a great great plan. I did want to get South Rounds and Easterlings to war so that I can play Corsair as a bombar. All right, and also threaten threaten Day Without Dawn. Even though I don't have Day Without Dawn, I want to threaten it so he's going to be forced to use his Wills of the West early in his turn. All right, he musters Rohan here. Um, okay, you know, I, I think that's okay. I, I don't really know. Um, you know, I, I guess my inclination is try and get somebody else to war. Like, why, why not get the elves to war and, and then start to use... And then you could use this muster to, to be able to get them get units in there, forces me to attack Woodland Realm. And now you can start to muster up Lorien. I don't know. It's it's not entirely clear what, what he should what he should be doing here. Um I think I like getting the elves to war. I think that's probably what I would do with that muster and then I could I could start I could use my musters to get I could use this regular muster to get um Lorien mustered up, and then when I get an army muster later, I can get this army into Helm's Deep because this is already a good army. I want that in. I want that into Helm's Deep. The one other benefit, if you get, if you put two musters into Rohan, let's see what he does with his second muster. So I play Shadows on Misty Mountain, um, and then he gets rid of the Palantir. Yeah, I, I like that play because otherwise he's he's not going to be able to take care of it next turn. So I think that's a good play. So I think if you were going to leave the Palantir. Then two musters into Rohan makes sense because then once Fords of Eisen is attacked, you'll have a chance to muster into Helm's Deep before it gets attacked. But if you're going to get rid of the Palantir and I only have one muster, I think I'd rather get the Elves to war so that I threaten um, Círdan's ships and that I can start to just muster into, into Lorien or Woodland Realm. And it sort of forces my hand. All right, so, but that is the correct play, I think, to get rid of the Palantir. So he gets rid of it and then I um, get my armies ready to do what they're going to do. All right, next round. Um, he draws Mirror of Galadriel, which is probably, he's probably a little relieved to see that, so he's feeling much more likely to be able to get Gandalf. Um, but he rolls two Wills of the West. So so this is great. And he's going to be able to have some options. So the first thing he does, obviously without question, is get Gandalf. If I had um, Day Without Dawn, would I play it right now? I don't know. Um, I think I would, I think I would still save it. Uh, I go ahead and get rid of power to great now because I drew, um, hill trolls and I don't really mind getting rid of that. Um, breaking of the fellowship, uh, I'm going to end up discarding because I like candles of corpses as it does direct corruption damage, you know, expected, uh, one and a half corruption breaking of the fellowship. Um, you know, it, it might, it might do some. But given the hunt pool right now, I'll, it's going to miss a lot on the eyes. And, um, you know, maybe maybe it's doing one, maybe two. I, I don't know exactly what the average of four zeros and a three, a two, a one. Yeah, it's, it's, probably, it's probably pretty pretty close to one. I don't know, maybe one and a half. So, so these are similar amounts of corruption damage. But this I can play when I... Oops. Uh, this I can play whenever I want and, um, breaking the fellowship, I can only play when he's revealed. So that's my thinking. And I want to save dreadful spells for the attack. So, so that's my thinking. And he considers what to do and decides to go for Aragorn. And I don't, I don't think that's unreasonable. He is doing pretty well on corruption, and he has a chance right now to get Aragorn if I don't have if I don't have Day Without Dawn, um, and it only costs him two corruption because he has I will go alone. So it's not crazy. I have three eyes, so to avoid a movement while I have three eyes isn't so bad. Um, but part of me wonders. Right now you're four away, right? You're four movement away. It's going to be really hard to get four movement next turn but if you have strider as the guide and you move once with this will of the west then you only need to get three movement and even if i reveal you right now with my three eyes and i reveal you you have another die to hide you could use this palantir to hide or you could use this this army muster to hide 
So I, I think my inclination is, even though I could get Aragorn here, um, if you can get the Fellowship into Mordor on turn, I don't know exactly what turn we're on, but it's pretty, it's pretty fast. You know, if you could get the Fellowship into Mordor next turn, especially with these, you know, good blue tiles in there, I think it's worth, I think it's worth rushing a little here. Um, so it's a tough call, but that's probably what I would do, especially when the Fellowship is out of Mordor. Uh, you know, a lot of these tiles, a lot of these tiles can, all of these tiles can reveal you. There are a bunch of reveals in here. And, and so it's really nice to have Strider in there to help hide, to keep, to keep the Fellowship moving. Okay, so he does that. He heals one, and um, I don't have Day Without Dawn. The other thing is it risks Day Without Dawn, but, you know, I'm, I'm relatively unlikely to have Day Without Dawn. So, you know, I don't have Day Without Dawn, and um, so I think at this point I have a lot of dice here. I could put um, Minas Tirith under siege, but my feeling is I wouldn't be able to take it out. It's unlikely. Uh, that I'm going to kill Aragorn this turn. I would need to reinforce that. He probably has some um, combat defenses, like something like um, the Grey Company or Guards of the Citadel, something like that. Or else he would be less likely to move Aragorn there, given this situation. And and even if he doesn't, like these armies can probably get in there and he can have a full stack. So I, I just think that's going to be a long, drawn-out battle. I kind of want to race him. And I have Dol Amroth right here um, that I could just go after. So even though I'm tempted, I like removing a die, um, I'm not going to do that. And instead, I'm going to stick with my original plan to go after Dol Amroth. The one thing to realize here is if I attack the elves, and I do want to attack the elves, but if I attack the elves, then he can muster in the other one using this muster die. And the other option is if I, um, if I attack Dol Amroth right now, then he can muster he can muster the elves and then they're they're gonna be he's gonna be able to get one of them mustered up also. So it's it's just it's gonna be a little tricky for me to get all of these. Um, we'll see what happens. All right. I think about getting I think about getting um, Nazgul, but in the end I decide that now is the time to go after Helm's Deep. Because if I don't do it now, he's gonna most likely use this army muster to move this army, this army into Westemne, right? And then next turn, if I attack Fords of Eisen, he's going to be able to get that army in. So while I want to also attack Dol Amroth and uh, attack all of these, um, I, I think that he's unlikely to be able to reinforce this uh, unless I put the elves to war. So I'm not in any rush to get the elves to war. And these guys are very close to getting in. And so this is an example of I can I can muster up. I have a good I have a good amount of musters and I can leave uh, four units behind so that I'm safe from a single end card um, with those musters and then I can attack twice with my two remaining dice. So that's so that's what I end up doing. I just muster up a whole bunch in Helm's Deep. It, a little bit comes out of the blue because of new powers rising and um, and then I attack in. So this is an example of if at any point earlier in the game he had gotten these armies to Westemnet, then he would be able to use this army muster and get them into Helm's Deep before this attack comes crashing in. So I think, I think that's a real, that's something important to keep in mind in, in the battle around Rohan. Getting these armies into Helm's Deep can really, can really make a difference. All right. So he plays Heroic Death here. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, but then he ends up not using it and just takes a regular. And I don't know if he forgot there, if he did that on purpose. Um, my inclination is to lose, uh, lose the leader instead of the, um, you don't have to do it. Um, you may, you may eliminate. So, so he, he, he chose not to do it, um, or he forgot, I guess, but I, it seems a little strange to have played the card and then not, and then just forgotten. Maybe that happened. All right, so he retreats back. I leave uh, four units behind, so I'm safe from an ant. I don't know if he has an ant. I'm hoping he doesn't have two, um, but that's that's relatively safe. He's he's drawn eight, um, uh, seven. He's drawn he's drawn seven character cards. Next turn he will have he will have eight. 
probably he'll have about one int. All right. So um, he played Scrubs of the Citadel. I was right. I feel pleased to have not gone and attacked Minas Tirith. That would have been really a big slog of the battle. But I do manage to get Helm's Deep under siege with two regulars and a leader. That's that's obviously good for me. Okay. So now I draw my Day Without Dawn, one turn too late. And um, he's just getting a bunch of Gondor reinforcements as Faramir's Rangers is good. Grey Company is obviously good. So he's solid there. Oh, one thing to note there, I, I used zero eyes. So I was able to put zero eyes in the pool because he didn't move at all. So that's another slight argument for um, moving last turn instead of getting Aragorn. It forces me to put eyes in and then hopefully I'm rolling a bunch of eyes and slowing down my military. Okay, so he gets a good roll and you know, you're gonna expect to get three movement um, and he does get three movement. And so he just, he can't get, he, he didn't get four. He's not gonna get in this turn. I mean, maybe if he doesn't get revealed and um, stays, he's, he, um, he uses this Will of the West to move and uses a ring, maybe. But I have, I now have um, Day Without Dawn. So I'm thinking it's, it's very unlikely for him to get in. But if he had been there instead of there, then, you know, much more likely for him to get in. Okay, so um, he has a muster. Um, you know, he musters up in Edoras. And, and that, that's a good natural reaction. But I think it's worth it to think through the whole turn in terms of what, what are you actually going to plan on doing here? Um, I wonder about moving the fellowship before I get a Nazgul on you. You know, you're definitely going to move the fellowship. So why not, why not move one? Um, you also are probably going to use a muster to get, to get these guys to war. So why not, why not do that now? Um, instead of doing this army here, I, I don't know. This is certainly not unreasonable. I, I don't think this is definitely wrong. But if you think ahead for your whole turn, what are you going to end up doing? It, it may be the case that getting that one extra elite there while this army is still here, it just, it it might not be worth it. Yeah, you're probably going to muster that at some point anyway. You certainly don't want me to come and take Edoras after I've taken Helm's Deep. So it's probably good to be prepared to have five units there. But um, even this, like, am I, I don't know that I'm likely to, to come after Edoras even if I take Helm's Deep with no casualties, am I really going to send this army out of Helm's Deep to Westham Net to attack Edoras? That's risky, especially especially with Ents. No Ents have been played. This army could counterattack, and then and then you can just retake. Um, yeah, I, I just don't know that's happening. So that's a long-winded way of saying I'd probably move the Fellowship first. Okay, so um, I attack Helm's Deep. I'm not sure. Maybe he's planning on coming in and counterattacking me. So, and maybe he's thinking about that. Um, I, I just don't think there's time to come in and counterattack. So um, I'm going to take Helm's Deep while I can. No cards. I roll two sixes. Obviously good strategy to roll sixes. I recommend it. And uh, he gets he gets one hit. I'm perfectly happy to lose the elite at that point because I want to be able to um, muster, muster them up elsewhere uh, in case I draw other mustering cards. All right, so... I'm up to three victory points. So so I'm always trying to think, okay, where am I going to get my 10 victory points? I've gotten one here and one, or two here and one here. So I'm at three. My plan is to continue to take these. So that's four more. I'm up to seven. Uh, I'm going to take Dol Amroth. That's nine. And then where's my other one? This is a decent army. I could possibly bring it down here and take Edoras. I could possibly go up and take the Shire. The Shire is a little less tempting now that North is at war because he can um, potentially muster up quite a decent army here. Um, Pelargir is an option, but once I take Dol Amroth, then it's a little riskier to take Pelargir and this army, Aragorn's army, can come in and, and retake it. Plus he has he could potentially have dead men of Dunhero. So um, I, I don't know exactly where all my victory points are coming from yet. I kind of want to see how this battle goes. Obviously it'd be great to take Lorien. I'm a little worried about how, how this mustering is going to go. Wh where am I going to take? My inclination is to take Woodland Realm while it's weak and let him muster up in Lorien if I had to choose. But if he musters an elite in Woodland Realm, then I'll go after Lorien. So I'm probably going to be able to get one of these, but not both. And I'll see I'll see which one he goes for. 
Um, but if I have my choice, I'll go for Woodland Realm because it's slightly weaker and it's and it's uh, harder to harder to reinforce up there. I want to I want to try and bring these armies up and take Erebor too. Okay, so he moves the Fellowship now. I think that makes sense. Uh, I miss, and then I muster some Nazgul because I know that I'm going to um, be moving Nazgul because I want to take Umbar. So I, I want to take Dol Amroth. So I want to take Dol Amroth before I attack the elves because I'm worried about Kiridin's ships. Uh, so, so that's what's happening with the Nazgul muster. I had a muster anyway and might as well do it so that I can have some spare Nazgul to harass the fellowship. Seeing me muster Nazgul, I'm not sure why we don't move the fellowship a again right now. Um, you know, the Grey Company is okay. Um, maybe he's trying to draw into... Um, Kiridin ships. So so that that's a that's a very reasonable play also. Okay. Um so he wow, I didn't so this is the first time I'm seeing it. I didn't realize he he actually did draw it. Wow, I did not know I did not know that he had it. So that all of that is an argument. Wow. So all of that is an argument for um having mustered the elves all the way back then because he did he did have um the great company in hand. He knew he was pretty likely to play it, and he didn't need to muster right here um, again into, into Edoras. He could have gotten the elves to war right then. Wow. Wow. Okay, so that, that was a subtle thing, but it ended up making um, a huge difference in this game. Um, so I play, Corsair, I play Corsairs of Umbar. I uh, leave one person home just because I'm slightly worried about a, um, a military victory and he's not he, the elves aren't at war yet. Um, and then he passes here. So my inclination, since you have Kirden's ships, is muster the elves right now because then I'm forced to make a choice between moving my Nazgul around to prepare this attack and, or making this attack without leadership. And um, it's unpleasant. I mean, it would certainly be unpleasant to have to make that attack without leadership. Wow. Okay. So, so I, think, I think that's a mistake. I think I, think I, would, I would almost certainly use this muster right now to muster the elves to war. And, now, and then Shadow is going to be faced with some really tough choices. Do you, do you attack this without any leadership? Do you attack some of the elves? Uh, because now they're at war and you can just muster up the elves. Um, or do you move leadership down here? I certainly, I certainly wouldn't pass at that point once I have Kirin's ships in hand. Okay, so he passes. I move my Nazgul. I'm very happy. I get, I get a Nazgul on the Fellowship. Um, I get all my leadership down in Dol Amroth. I think I bring all six. I bring uh, six leadership with five Nazgul so that I have the option to play. Um, dreadful spells, just in case something goes horribly wrong with this. Maybe he has Imrahil of Dol Amroth. So, um, just in case. He moves the Fellowship now. Yeah. Well, yeah, so that, that pass, I mean, okay. And um, I hit with a Nazgul. So the Nazgul did its job. And I get a three. He loses Gimli and then also loses a... Um, um, a hobbit. He he wasn't quite sure about the rule, but yeah, you can lose it. You can lose a hobbit there because you can always use a guide ability. So Gimli uh, dies to the corruption, and then you have a new guide. There's still one corruption remaining. He uses the hobbit's guide ability, and and the hobbit separates, and so he takes no corruption. And that's obviously much better. Um, it's much better to have only one hobbit in because that way, if you look at the hunt pool, um, these ones will no longer reveal you if you only have a single hobbit because that way the the remaining hobbit will separate and then you're going to have Gollum as guide immediately and then this won't reveal you. Um, so it's much better to have only one hobbit in instead of two. All right, so um, continuing on, I am excited to play um, Candles of Corpses before he gets down to Gollum because it's obviously a much more effective card. Expected expected damage is one and a half when when uh, Gollum is not guide and only one half when Gollum is guide. So it's much better to play it while um, while Gollum is not guide. But now that um, 
Oh, the st elves still aren't at war. Okay, so he moved. Right. So I go ahead. Um, I go ahead and play Candles with Corpses because I know if he puts the elves to war, I'll, I'll just attack Dol Amroth. Maybe it would make sense. It might have been slightly better to attack Dol Amroth first. He's probably not moving again. But, you know, I don't know. This Will of the West, he's, he, I'm thinking, okay, he might be using that to move. So that's that's why I play this now. And I'm thinking I can take out Dol Amroth in one turn. That's, that's my plan. All right. So I miss. Um, but... It, it's still reasonable to, to play it and try. Okay, at this point, he finally musters the elves to war. Now, I have a tough choice. I want to attack here. I want to attack here. I want to attack here. I can't do all of that. My thinking is it's better to attack Dol Amroth in case he has Kiradin's ships. Whichever elven stronghold he musters in with this Will of the West, I will attack the other one with my giant army sitting outside its borders. And then I'll just basically give up on, on that other one. All right, so I go ahead and attack Dol Amroth. Uh, it's, a t it's a close battle. Um, I cycle some combat. I cycle a character card because I want to draw into uh, Cruel Weather if possible. Um, but I just, I just managed to defeat it. So obviously that's, that's really a shame. Uh, it would have been great if he could have reinforced that. That, that. that battle would have been much tougher with two elven elites in there. Um, all right, so he goes ahead and musters in Lorien. Now... I don't know. I don't know exactly what's right. My, my feeling is I would tend to muster up here in Woodland Realm because this army is weaker than this army. And if this army goes and attacks Erebor, I'll now have a potentially sizable army to retake Dale and do something else with this army. If, on the other hand, I besiege Woodland Realm, which I certainly will do now that he's mustered in Lorien, then this large army in Lorien is just going to sit there. It can't, it can't like threaten anything else. So I think between picking between these two, my inclination is to muster up in Woodland Realm. I'm not totally sure. Um, the other thing is the Balrog hasn't come out. And so the Balrog can attack Lorien. I, I don't know. Maybe that that's an argument in favor of defending Lorien more. So it doesn't fall too easily. Um, yeah. I, I think I think still all in all I would probably go for to, to defend Woodland Realm over Lorien at this point. Okay, so I I sort of give up on Lorien. Um, I couldn't quite get all of my uh, attacks in, but I did manage to take Helm's Deep. I did manage to take Dol Amroth, um, and I'm getting Woodland Realm. So that's going to put me at that's going to put me at seven, including Dale, and then for my final three victory points probably um, Erebor because he can't really reinforce that much more except with Dane Ironfoot's Guard, and I can bring all these armies to bear, um, and probably the Shire, or maybe maybe Edris, but, but probably these guys are heading up to the Shire. Okay, so that's my plan. He is at six dice now, and um, I'm expecting him to get into get into Mordor this turn. right? But but imagine, what if, what if he were in Mordor this turn instead of, instead of next turn? Because um, he's not going to be able to climb up Mount Doom in a single turn. He needs two turns. So I'm thinking to myself, I have to win by the end of next turn. That's that's my current plan right now. And he's going to be able to make it in. Um, you know, maybe maybe there's some... Oh, this is a little bit of an interesting role. I have... Um, I want to play Give It To Us. I want to play Dreadful Spells to soften up. Um, wherever the next army is, and and more importantly, I want to move my Nazgul to be able to take out um, whichever place I'm attacking, presumably Woodland Realm, because I want to defeat it before he gets Thranduil's archers. So it's it's a little bit tricky for me um, to have not rolled a um, character die. I'm going to use this ring to do something, and I'm going to cycle cards because I need to get the Witch King probably up here so that I can cycle cards like Words of Power and get into better better character cards. Maybe I'll get to draw um, Cruel Weather. But it's also possible that I should be using um, an army die to get rid of this Will of the West so that he has to use a ring to get in. And maybe at this point he should be thinking, just in case he has Day Without Dawn, I should use this Will of the West because I really do want to move twice this turn. So, um, I yeah, his first movement, his first action is to muster in Lorien. Um, I think that makes sense. I, I think that probably makes sense because um, otherwise I could besiege it with 
with this army and that's that's letting me have it um but that's a tough call um i'm gonna get to put a nazgul on the fellowship this way but yeah i i don't know i i think yeah mustering to lorian is is probably right I, I think i think that's probably the right play okay so i use the ring i move my nazgul all around and i continue to have five nazgul here so that i can play dreadful spells at some point up there and now he moves the fellowship I think I use the Will of the West here. There's no reason not to use the Will of the West in case I have Day Without Dawn. Um, okay, I miss him. And because I miss him, I think to myself, is it worth it to use my only... Um, is, it use, is it worth it to get rid of it now when he's then going to move with his... Um, with his ring? And... Uh, then I won't, um, I, well, I don't know. M maybe the right thing was to, was to get rid of it here so that he would have to use a ring. Um, I think because he had six dice, I'm thinking it's better to save this for later. Um, but that might've just been a misplay. Uh, I think, I think uh, upon reflection, this is probably a misplay. I don't remember exactly why I wanted to save that. I could have used an army die to, um, to play it to play Day Without Dawn, and still been able to do this attack in Woodland Realm, cycle this card, and then if I get Cruel Weather, then, then do Cruel Weather. Um, yeah, so that's probably a mistake. All right, I attack into Woodland Realm. I make some progress. I don't press because I want to be able to cycle more cards, and then he moves here. So, yeah, mistake. I think mistake for, for not playing Day Without Dawn. All right, I hit him, and... I get a one reveal. So so this is interesting. What should he do here? I think he's maybe worried about cruel weather. And so he chooses to actually keep the Hobbit in, take the one corruption, get revealed, and now he's safe from cruel weather. I get to draw an extra tile, but there's so many tiles, there's so there's like almost 50% chance. 45% chance to get an eye. It's not that it's not that scary. The ex, the expected extra damage is, is relatively low here. So, I think given the hunt pool, all of this um all of this makes a lot of sense. And um so he goes ahead and, and reveals and um I draw a one. And now he loses um he loses the hobbit. So that makes sense. We erroneously remove move the corruption down, but we, we move it back up. It should it should be a two. And now, what do you do for me? I I um I could play Lure of the Ring right here, um, and do one corruption, but then that's my only that's my only um other character card. I also want to put give it to us in play. My thinking is better to play Lure of the Ring now, and then next turn. Um, put give it to us in the pool so that um, because he's going to have to hide at the start of next turn so I'll have a chance to play it but I think that's probably I think that's probably a mistake because I need to win by the end of next turn probably so so I think it's if I'm if I'm thinking militarily, it's good to put give it to us in the pool because that could potentially really slow him down going up Mordor, and then he might not even be able to make it in in two turns. It might take him three turns. Um, but one extra corruption right now is probably not is probably not worth it. So um, I end up playing Lord of the Ring. I think this is a mistake. I think it would it would have been better to play give it to us. Um, or the other option is attack into Woodland Realm. And then, um, and then cycle this and try and get more red tiles because red tiles can really slow him down and make him take two turns to or three turns to, to make it up Mount Doom. All right, so that's I think a slight inaccuracy on my part. And then he uses there's another way, and um, that's interesting. I th I think it makes sense. Um, I don't know. Does he have other options for for what to do here? Um, Yeah, he's a, he's a little bit stuck on what to do. Maybe maybe I use a a ring here. I nah, I don't know. 
it's it's a tough call. It it probably makes it probably makes sense to do that. Um, the thing the the reason why I like saving this is it lets you have maybe some hope of destroying the ring next turn if you save it. Because realistically, um, I'm taking out Woodland Realm. I'm already at seven. It's not that hard to see me getting three more victory points next turn. And so with these with these pleasant tiles in the in the pool, I mean, to be fair, there are a lot of eyes. Um, but it might be possible, there are no red tiles right now. It might be possible for me to move four times, move move five times and hide once. Um, you know, it's unlikely. It's unlikely, but it's it's possible. I could get if I use a ring right now to hide, then next turn I could roll four movement like a character um, or Will of the West, a Palantir for a fifth movement with There's Another Way, and a ring um, for a sixth movement or, hi or hide. So maybe I'm playing to my odds there. I don't know. If you look at this board and you're like, I'm going to last two more turns, then I think it makes sense to... Um, then it probably it probably makes sense to to play this now. But even then, uh, even then, I would hold it. Th this is a tricky moment. What what do you do? You're making it into Mordor, but okay. The other thing to note, one other thing to note on this, it is often risky to um, hide yourself while you are in this stronghold because if I can manage to reveal you, then you're gonna have to draw an extra tile for for being revealed in a stronghold. Like if I play like Orc Patrol or something like that. But in this case, it's totally appropriate and fine for him to do that. That's There's no risk of that in this situation because any of the tile drawing cards will not reveal him because eyes won't reveal him because they don't work on the tile drawing cards. And these won't work because he has Gollum. Um, it does prevent him from using Gollum's ability to um, hide to reduce corruption, but but that's probably okay. Um, and something like um, Nazgul Search doesn't work because he's at zero movement. And on top of all of that, I've used a ring and I don't have any character dice or palantirs. So I can't be playing any of those cards anyway. So for all of those reasons, it's fine for him to be playing it, but generally be careful about hiding the fellowship while Shadow is still taking its, its uh, last turn before you move into Mordor because you can get those extra tile draws. All right, that was a lot of discussion on this point, but it's it's an interesting moment in the game. Okay, so continuing on, um, I go ahead and proceed in Woodland Realm. I don't play a card and I defeat it. That's pretty predictable. And then I use this other um, army movement. I go to Withered Heath instead of Dale because um, why? I didn't want him to have shenanigans of retreating to Withered Heath and then using scouts to wither heath and then attacking within realm i don't know what i was thinking I, it, it almost certainly doesn't matter um okay and then i figure out well am i going to go down here and take this no it makes a lot more sense to go after the shire so so we go after the shire he moves aragorn here i, I don't know i guess that makes sense to be able to prepare a counterattack into pilar gear so that's that's pro that's probably appropriate um, I don't know what he's doing with these guys. Yeah, so this army unit, I, I don't know what it's doing. I, I think I would be more inclined to head toward the Shire um, because that's where I'm getting my extra victory point after taking out Erebor. So he's, I think he's just, he's just in a tough spot right here. All right, I go ahead and besiege Erebor. It makes sense, I think, to go into siege. You know, you can think about, do I want to fight that? But, but no, that's obviously dumb. Go into siege. And um, then with my last muster, I uh, he musters in the Shire, which is appropriate, and I muster in um, North Dunlon. So, you know, I'm getting a little nervous that he's going to have two Ent cards, and eventually these guys are going to um, no longer be leaders, so I'm going to try and get to the Shire soon. I also think about Tom Bombadil. I, uh, I, I guess I, I missed that he had played it. So he played Tom Bombadil at some point. I was, I was thinking that Tom Bombadil was still an option, but it's not because he already played it. 
Um, if you see that the shadow is going for the Shire, then it's always nice to be able to save Tom Bombadil. But um, where did he where did he play it? All right, I, I guess he he played it on a on the battle in Woodland Realm, perhaps. Okay, um, so he declares that makes sense. I put one eye in. And he rolls three movement. So we know for sure he's not destroying the ring this turn. It's just impossible. So um, he's probably destroying the ring next turn. Um, and it, I sure would rather have that red one in the pool than have one extra corruption done to him. So again, it would if I wanted to slow him down, it would have been would have been better to do that. But uh, I think I can I think I can get three victory points this turn. So he moves. Um, takes two, that's fine. He's, he's, you know, hoping to get, um, hoping to get these, uh, heals, which, which makes sense. Um, but realistically it's all about, am I going to be able to take out, um, Erebor and the Shire this turn? And there's no real place he can counterattack effectively. Um, and this is, this is again, that argument for Woodland Realm. Um, there would be one extra attack that he could make. It, let's say I took out Lorien instead of Woodland Realm. There'd be one extra attack that he could make from, um, Woodland Realm into Dale as a last ditch sort of attack, um, to stall me as opposed to now there's not going to be anything, right? I'm not going to go after Pilar gear, both because this army is here and because I'm worried possibly about dead men. And, um, he is just too far away to recapture this. I think he's realistically too far away to recapture Helm's Deep. Maybe with ent some Ent cards he could possibly do it, but realistically that's that's pretty rough. And there's no real easy way for him to defend the Shire enough. Um, possibly these these Greyhaven units could get in there, um, but then I could just take Greyhaven. So, you know, um, it's, a, it's a tough situation for him. I don't see a lot of options at this point in the game for him. Um, so I think about, I think about putting the red tile in right now. Um, but I say to myself, it doesn't matter because I need to, that one tile is not going to delay him a whole round. He'll be able to destroy it next, next turn. Um, and instead I can use this Palantir for something useful like dreadful spells or the shadow lengthens, um, as needed. Um, and at this point, I'm also still thinking Tom Bombadil might be played, so I need to be prepared um, to use Day Without Dawn and give it to us. And as one note, I did save Day Without Dawn for now, thinking, okay, if he happens to roll some pal some um, Wills of the West, I'm going to be able to get rid of them. And, you know, with six dice, it's not unreasonable that you could roll two or even three uh, Wills of the West. So that, that I left my options open. I wanted to make sure he couldn't destroy the ring this turn and I would have this whole full round to be able to um, get my 10 victory points. All right, so I go ahead and reinforce here right now, just in case. I mean, maybe there's some argument to be made for reinforcing in South Rune, but I think because I have Dreadful Spells and I'm going to have this whole army in here and I have good combat cards like Mumako and Deadly Strife, I think I'm, I'm pretty likely to be able to... Um, to be able to defeat that army. I'm a little worried about um, Dane Ironfoot's guard. If Dane Ironfoot's guard is there, it's gonna be a little bit tricky, but I think he probably would have already played it by now. So, all right. Um, he plays Elven Cloaks. Does that make sense? Um, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe you just draw strategy cards trying to get Dane Ironfoot's card, or you're thinking you're thinking this is gonna hold. I don't know. It's not it's not a great roll. It's not a great roll. Okay, so he plays Elven Cloaks. That's fine. It's hard it's hard to know exactly what to do there. Um, and now and now he now he draws the strategy card. So I don't know why why not just waste waste some of these cards um maybe just move some more you know you're gonna move the fellowship okay so i'm thinking maybe he's gonna play um tom bombadil but i forgot that he already played it i'm just keeping my options open in case he plays ents and destroys saruman i want to have army uh attack dice to be able to to be able to attack into here since i can't use character dice once these guys are no longer leaders but at this point i'm thinking okay i'm gonna be able to take the shire no problem 
and um, you know I could have used this palantir to be able to bring th these armies in with um, the shadow lengthens, but I'm happy to instead use this combat effect, which is a very strong combat effect, and um, use uh, dreadful spells as my palantir action. So that's my plan. I take out the Shire, obviously no no surprises there, and I'm up to, I'm up to eight. He moves the Fellowship, gets a zero. I play Dreadful Spells to um, soften up Erebor. I get uh, two. You know, expected is five thirds is what you're going to expect to get. Um, so that's pretty close to two. Not not an unreasonable result. And then he moves the Fellowship again. At this point, gets an I. It doesn't really matter. I mean, obviously it'd be better to get a, a lower number, but, you know, I think it's pretty likely that he's going to be able to um, destroy the ring next time. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a little risky, but he's pro he's probably okay. If, if I don't manage to take Erebor this time, cause yeah, I don't think he's played, he hasn't played Bilbo song. There's probably some other healing he could do. Um, okay. So, um, I move my armies in, I get a full stack there. And then, um, he plays Spirit of Mordor. This is exactly the same as Dreadful Spells. He only gets one. Um, but quite honestly, with my combat cards, it's not going to... I, I think it, I, I would have to get pretty unlucky here with these combat cards to, to lose this battle, given that he didn't have Dane Ironfoot's guard. I think with Dane Ironfoot's guard, it's, it's, a much different, it's a much different battle. But I think I still win it reasonably likely, but it's, but it's much closer. All right, so I play um, Mumakil. He plays Advantageous Positions. It's a nice cancellation, but I happen to roll well do three hits and um at that point i redrew great host and that's and that's the end of the game um so it was it was a good one um you know the fellowship came close i think if instead of getting strider if he had moved and then gotten in a whole turn earlier he had enough rings um i think he might have been able to destroy the ring on this turn um and i also think if uh, Helm's Deep had been defended a little bit better. Um, it was, it, you know, it's hard to know exactly when to get in there, but if Helm's, if he had managed to get this, these armies into Helm's Deep first, that would have been much trickier for me. And finally, um, if he could have gotten um, Kyrdin's ships played in Dol Amroth, that would have made, that obviously would have made a, potentially a big difference. You know, it, it still may be the case that I would have won those sieges, um, and I would have rolled well and would have been able to defeat them without spending a lot more time. But as free, you're really just trying to um, harden up your defenses. And um, and as Shadow, I'm really trying to attack, attack the weakest places. So uh, that was the game. Hope you enjoyed it. Please, if you have suggestions for games that you think would be interesting for me to analyze, please go ahead and uh, email them to me, waroftheringchamp at gmail.com. Be happy to receive any game logs and uh, hope this was uh, interesting. Thanks so much.